Hello there and welcome to my YouTube channel once again. And for those of you who are new to this channel, you're most welcome. My name is Jessica. I'm a broadcaster that lives in Ghana. I'm also a voiceover artist and I've been doing this for many years. Um, today I want to talk about six ways to overcome grief or loss. In a second, I'm going to get into it, but let me just mention that if you haven't subscribed to my channel, take a moment to do that and don't just subscribe, please switch on the notification bell as well so that when I post new footage, you get a notification. And if it's the kind of thing you'd like to consume, come back here and watch all the exciting content that I'm putting together for you. All right. So why do I think that I'm in a position to talk about grief? You know, there's one thing I'd like to say for starters, and it's that usually until you've really been in someone's shoes, you're absolutely clueless, completely clueless about how they truly feel. And this rang really true to me when my own mother died. Now, just to give you a bit of background, I was really close. I'm the last born of, you know, my family. And so I was really, really close to my mother. She was my everything. You know, she was my best friend. She was open. She was that person you could just go and visit. And next thing you know, it's nightfall and you couldn't even tell that time had gone so fast because she was always engaging us, always advising us, always praying for us. And my mother was my biggest cheerleader. And finding myself in the media, I realized that I constantly had to keep going back to her for reassurance, for support, emotional and physical. And she was the rock of our family. And so up until the time when she died, I remember whenever I would see people, maybe friends of mine, lose family members or go through a traumatic experience in their relationship, a breakup, the loss of a cousin, an aunt, a father, I would reach out to them and really deeply feel sorry for them, express my sympathies, probably even show up for the funeral. But until I lost my mother, I'll admit, I never truly understood their pain. Death is inevitable. And I can tell you this for a fact that you definitely will have your own experience with death. It's not an easy place to be and it can completely change your life. I'm not gonna sit here and behave as if I have completely healed, gotten over the death of my mom. It's been um, two years and a couple of months now. I will say that I don't cry as often as I used to, which was very often in the beginning. And in recent times, I've realized that when people mention her name or her memory, a memory of her comes up, I catch myself smiling, which was something that I could not do um, in previous years. Smiling not because I'm happy or I'd gotten over the fact that she was dead, but just smiling of the thought that she ever lived and she existed. I'm just trying to say that if you've never been there, you never quite will understand. However, I do know that there are people who are watching this video today who are freshly going through grief. And it could be going through a heartbreak because the relationship that you were in that you thought was going to last fell right through the cracks. It could be because you've lost a loved one, like I already said, a mother a father, a sister, brother, uncle, grandparent, pet, because there are people who are really close to, you know, their animals or their pets as well. And you need to sort of figure out how to get over your grief, else you'll find yourself stuck in a dark hole for a long time. Take it from me. Now, there's no particular way to grieve. None whatsoever. There's no formula to it. And indeed, we all grieve, grieve differently. But I believe that there are healthier ways to approach how you feel. And that's what I want to share with you right now. So how exactly can you 
deal with the grieving process. Now, like I already said, there's no formula to dealing with this, but I've discovered a couple of ways that, or things that I find myself employing or using from time to time to help me cope for when, for those days when I'm really, really down for those days where I feel like I do not want to talk to anybody. I want to, I don't want to go on air. I don't want to pick up my phone. And I do have those moments. But I believe that if I'm able, if you're able to practice what I'm about to say, it would help you perhaps heal faster and get over your grief sooner, which I'm guessing is what you actually want to do. Point number one, you need to learn to acknowledge your pain. Now, there are different stages of grief, you know, usually you'd go through the shock of the idea that the person is no longer present in your life and you probably wouldn't see them again. And then you go into a process of denial where you're like, no, they're not dead. They can't be dead. You know, and then there, there are these there are all these steps that you sort of go through. But until you begin to actually acknowledge your pain and say to yourself that it's okay to feel the way I'm feeling. It's okay to not want to talk to anyone. It's okay to not want to pick up my phone for days. It's okay to not want to eat. Until you get to that point where you just allow yourself to feel all the pain you will not be able to get on your road to recovery. You need to acknowledge that pain. You need to realize it's there. Only when you acknowledge the problem is when you can start devising ways or solutions to end that problem or to solve that problem. So make sure you're acknowledging your pain. Secondly, Accept that grief can trigger unexpected and varied emotions. So when my mother died, the next thing I did was hop on a motorcycle. And I, I get it. Like, I've had people coming to me and telling me that, why are you riding? It's so dangerous. You're going to die. And the talk just keeps going on and on and on. But they don't really know the reason why I turned to writing. I knew better, of course. Um, I realized that hopping on my motorcycle allowed me the freedom from the pain that I was feeling. The pain was raw. The pain was hard. It hit me harder than anybody realizes. And I realized that whenever I was on my motorcycle, I didn't think about anything but what was in front of me. Riding a motorcycle for me took me away from that pain, even if it was for just an hour. And whenever I came back from the ride, I was still on that high for a couple more hours, if at all, before my pain would gradually creep back. I'm just trying to say that people cope with pain differently. Some may decide to go on a sex spree, just decide to be promiscuous, just trying to find that good feeling to help them forget about their pain. There's some people who, whose relationships will suffer just because they're in pain. And let me say I was one of them. You know, I got to a point where I started to push my partner away and it wasn't even deliberate. I could not come to that place of love anymore. I didn't have any love to give when I was in such pain. And so I ended up pushing, up, you know, the person who really cared about me away. And there are people like that who also grieve in such a manner. And it's OK, too. Usually the people who are closest to you should be able to help to stick by you and sort of help you go through all these motions because they will come. They're like waves. The pain ebbs and flows. It never dissipates. It just goes and comes. 
And it's important that basically you understand or accept that grief can actually trigger different, totally, in fact, things that you never thought you could do. It could trigger you to just go and get those things out of the way and done. You could become the most uncaring person in the world. You can cuss the whole world out. And that's not even your nature. Take note. Point number three, you need to understand that your grieving process will be unique to you. And I already said this in the previous point. No two people grieve the same way. I gained a lot of my weight back after my mom died. And it was simply because I turned to food. I found that I, I fell back into my old habits. I realized that food gave me comfort. And so I would mindlessly eat. I gained 16 kg back when my mom died. I'm on my way to losing it. I'm not even where I really want to be right now. But that was the way I grieved. I ate, I hopped on my motorcycle, and I shut out the people that I loved. It's okay. You're going to have to find a trigger sometime down the line. Something that's just going to make you switch and say, enough is enough. I can't continue to live like this. But whatever you do, just understand that your grieving process, the grieving process, will be unique to just you. Don't listen to people who are going to come in and say, oh, you know, you're supposed to grieve that way or you didn't cry enough. It means you weren't really sorry or you don't miss this person, except people grieve differently. So don't listen to any of that. Now, what you also want to do, fourthly, is to seek out face-to-face -face support from people who are close to you. At a point in my life, I had to speak to a counselor who would help me through the process. And a lot of people like I said, I have this brave front and everybody thinks, oh, Jessica's fine. They hear her on air. Everything's okay. She has no problems. But I was going through a major breakdown. I had to call in a counselor. I had to talk to someone who was neutral, someone who wasn't going to judge me, someone who didn't know my mother and could really sort of understand where I was coming from, someone who had their own experience with grief. And this particular counselor had, he had lost his mom at a very young age. And he was quick to tell me what his own experience was like and how he managed to get over it. And he never judged me, you know, and I can imagine, I mean, I remember some of the things that I said to him that I probably would not say out loud to anyone, but I found myself saying that because obviously I was grieving. I was hurt and I wanted to lash out. He would come and see me ever so often and we would talk. He would just listen to me talk for minutes on end and he would encourage me. So it's okay to ask for support. It's okay to, to, to reach out to people who you know genuinely care about you and ask for help from them to help you get through the process. Now, another thing I would say is it's really important that you support yourself emotionally by taking care of yourself physically. How did I do that? I love to work out. So... If I was taking care of my exercise, and exercise would give me a, a boost in my mood, improve my mood, because of course the endorphins were kicking after my workout and I would feel invincible. I found myself going to exercise or turning to exercise a lot um, just to help me get by. Whilst I was exercising, I'd find myself 
listening to all these motivational messages about how I can do it and there's nothing impossible and it's not the end of the world. And I listened to these messages on end. You need to be able to take care of yourself physically. There's no point letting go of your life, being so deeply affected by your loss that you're literally losing your job as well. You need to find a way to boost your mood and nobody can do it for you. And unfortunately, like people can only support, they can only talk to you. But if you're not ready to lift yourself from the pits, you're going to have issues, major issues. Finally, I would say, learn the difference between grief and depression, you know, and I get it. Grief is an emotional sense of loss, especially when someone or something close to you is no longer there. And for me, I feel that there's a really close, um, like this, this, it's almost very hard to, to, to differentiate the two, like between grief and depression. But this is how I see it. Because when you're grieving, you can even within that moment of grief or that period of grief, enjoy certain moments of happiness, right? Whereas with depression, it's chronic, it's constant. You cannot seem to get out of that hole. If you're getting into depression, then I will ask that you seek professional help. There are people out there who are trained to sort of help you process certain things. And I feel like if you reach out to them, they'll be able to give you guidance, give you tips on how to deal. But definitely ask for help. There's help out there, you know. Even if you don't see a psychologist or some therapist who can help you through your depression, talk to someone, reach out, don't suffer alone. You don't have to. There are people who care about you. There are people who want to listen, you know, seek those people out and ask for their help, just like I did.